interesting because I actually have my bachelor's in biochemistry, my PhD in pharmacology. And for the last 10 years, I've been helping nonprofit organizations to build and design research and clinical programs that help and facilitate underserved populations in terms of their healthcare options. And I've had an immensely wonderful career doing this, building my own leadership and management skills. But as a woman of color, especially as a Latina in STEM, I've definitely faced challenges in how my career has progressed and my career development. So during the course of me really trying to focus on building my confidence, my self-esteem, my self-worth, and really representing that in the workforce and in the workplace, I've recognized that there aren't as many professional development and career development opportunities specifically geared towards women of color. So about two years ago, I decided to take my own journey and really build my business around helping women of color to beat their own self-doubt, to really build their confidence, and to own their careers in the way that they want to own them. It's the same, it's the same advice I would give them in any year, really, which is sometimes when we go into the job search, we really focus on the job. But I also like to tell individuals to focus on the organization. So often when we want to leave or transition out of a job, it isn't necessarily because of the work that we're doing, but in fact, because of the support or even lack of support we are receiving from the organization. So it's so essential that you really understand what is it that you need as a professional to thrive and how can your organization support you in that effort. So for many of my clients, diversity and inclusion is huge. And that's something that we should all be focusing on. So for them, they really want to feel valued. They want to feel like their ideas matter. So it's important that they connect to a company that's going to really provide that. So for job seekers in 2021 and just any time, it's really important to not just focus on the job and just focus on the work that you're going to be doing, but is this really the company that you need to work within to thrive? And do they have the values that connect to your internal values as well? Virtual is here to stay. <laughs> And as a self-proclaimed introvert, I'm cool with that. I think virtual networking and the virtual space, it's just here to stay. We've seen it really grow within 2020 especially, and that is going to be an opportunity, I think a really great opportunity for job seekers, for, for, for professionals, to be able to actually connect with individuals in their field in more of a global capacity. So whereas before we were really thinking about networking in terms of just where you are, you can now network and connect with individuals all over the world. So for me, in 2020, one of the things that really went popping was LinkedIn, because LinkedIn became that space where everybody just sort of gravitated to try to feel connected in a professional space, and also to try to build their own professional brand to do that networking and connecting. So I think that's here to stay in 2021. And I actually think it's a wonderful way for us all to do that connecting in an authentic fashion because networking events in the past could be a little bit challenging. So I think this is a new way for us to present ourselves as thought leaders and to present ourselves in a very authentic fashion. I try to think about like what would I would have wanted to know as a professional a few years ago and that's the type of content that I create when I'm really speaking to my audience and speaking to my community I'm speaking to them in regards of like the old Jasmine you know the Jasmine who may have felt some self-doubt the Jasmine didn't feel so great about herself and what would she have wanted to know to inspire her and I think that inspiration is really what I try to portray in my content and then there there's also, of course, the professional development tools, too, and resources. What would she have wanted to know when she wasn't feeling so great about her career advancement? And what would, what would she want to know in terms of her next step? So I really try to think about me <laughs> a few years ago and how to kind of link that brand and that message to be something empowering, inspiring, and educational that I would have loved to know five, ten years ago. content
content that resonates the most, to be 100% honest, is the authentic, raw, real content. And I have to say that um, when I originally started on LinkedIn, I felt like I couldn't represent myself in that way. It gave me this sort of concept of, well, if I'm in this professional sort of arena or this professional environment, I almost kind of have to put on the suit and like act in a certain way. But when I actually started to really engage on LinkedIn, what I started to notice was that people were getting really real and really raw. And those were the kinds of content pieces that really connected to me. I wanted to see my journey in someone else. And I wanted to see how they overcame that journey. And so for me, it's really about the authenticity. It's about the rawness. I'm not here to tell you that I'm perfect. I'm not here to tell you that every day I feel good about myself. In fact, many times the content that I create is what makes me feel good about myself that day. So it's about, I think, being authentic, being raw, being real, and letting people know the challenging side of what you're going through. Because each and every day we have a moment to inspire someone, and this is our opportunity to take that moment. 